So my new friends over at Sunlu sent me this little filament connector that they recently released and is currently on pre-order. <clears throat> they aren't paying me for this review, they just sent this item for free. And I'm not quite sure where it fits into your 3D printing hobby. Let's take a look at why you may or may not want one of these. Let's start with what's in the box. You're going to find a power connector, some little Teflon tubes for doing the heating process and protecting the filament, and then you'll also find the device itself, the filament connector. One thing they don't tell you is that this doesn't come with a power brick, and this thing requires a 5 volt, 2 amp power supply. For reference, the classic Apple power brick is 5 volts, 1 amp. This Sony battery charger that I have is rated at 5 volts and 1.5 amps. This random charger that I found and didn't know we had is rated for 5 volts, 2.1 amps. So this one will do. And just for reference, the new style of USB-C charger from Apple is 5 volts, 3 amps. Just to give you an idea of what that looks like, so this filament connector won't work with all of your adapters. Make sure you check that before you use this thing. It's pretty easy to operate. Once it's plugged in, it'll light up everything. It'll be in standby mode. You can turn it on. PLA they recommend 185, and you can see the current temp in this little window here. Basically just open and unlatch that. To prepare your filament, grab one of these little Teflon tubes. And your pieces of filament. You want to cut each of these at an angle. I like to do slightly opposing angles because then the curvature of the filament will match. But you basically put them in the tube. And you orient them, set those flat faces, press against each other that the angles come together like that. And now we wait for this to heat up all the way, which only takes a couple minutes. So it'll beep at you like that once it's up to temp. And now we can just lift this gate, place the filament in the middle, clamp that down, press these together a little bit. and it beeps at us to indicate that it's done. And those should be melted together. Now we have to let it cool for a couple seconds. It's still kind of hot. You'll know it's cool once the Teflon is allowed to slide freely. It'll basically release from the filament. And so one way to remove it is if you have short pieces like this, you could just slide it off the end or they've also got a built-in feature that's kind of neat, so you don't have to use a knife and cut it off. You don't have to do that on the larger spools. Um, you can actually just put it into this slot up here. slice the, uh, the Teflon here enough for you to remove that sleeve. So now we have some, some fused filament there. It has like a pretty good connection 
and then you have to dispose of the little Teflon sleeve. So when is this actually useful? Well, I think it can be useful if you have a little sample piece that maybe you want to connect to a larger spool. If you have any printer that has a filament runout sensor, this is kind of pointless because you could just load up your sample. It'll trigger the runout sensor when it's finished and then you could load in your regular spool and you'd be done. But just for argument's sake, let's look, take a look at loading this up. So we've added our sample back onto this spool of white that I had laying around. That's kind of neat. I feel like this thing would go really well with a re-spooler. That way you'd be able to spool up a large amount and then split it and then spool some more instead of just doing these short little sections. Um, it would make even this portion here a little bit more convenient if you had one of those re-spoolers that everyone was printing to get the regular spools um, loaded from the cardboard spools that weren't compatible with the AMS. I could see that being a pretty good use case. I think my conclusion is that most people don't need one of these, but I think I might throw together a bunch of filaments and then we'll see what the result looks like coming out of the printer. So in about eight minutes I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven color changes. And we'll weigh this and see if it's enough to make a benchy. And then we'll print it out. At the end of the day, it does the thing. It connects filament. Uh, it can go up to 240 degrees Celsius, which means it's able to do things like polycarbonate and nylon. I'm just not sure that anyone really needs this thing. So let me know in the comments if you would use it. I have a link in the description, which is an affiliate link. So if you feel like supporting the channel, be sure to check that out and I will see you in the next one.